Hi everybody, I'm Kirsty Beacon. Welcome back to the Kirsty Beacon Show. Yes, the Kirsty Beacon Show. <laughs> um, today I've got my little sister in. Oh my god, little sister. She's only 17, bless her, going on 25. Um, doing her nails today. She likes long nails. You like square nails, don't you? Yeah. They are making a massive comeback though, so we're gonna do long, square, neon nails. Um, first of all, I'm gonna prep cuticles. So Lily's had a soak off already, so we've removed the acrylic from her previous set. I'm gonna use the cuticle bit, just like a little sort of, what shape would you, rugby ball shape, yeah? Or or American football shape. It's definitely more American football than it is. Rugby. rugby. Aren't they like the same ball? No, no. <laughs> no Are they not? Definitely not. Um, and I'm using, and I can never pronounce this name, Loraco. Yeah, the Loraco, um, it is the 40k, so the Pro 40k. It's super silent, there's light, you know. Is that on? That's on. No. It's on! Put it in your microphone. Oh. Oh yeah, you can start hearing a bit more. Honestly, it's amazing. So, can we get a lot of like questions about cuticle bits and also electric files? So, that's the electric file I use because the other one got broken. Um, I didn't break it, Adam broke it. Well, it was. It was old. Cheryl actually broke it. Cheryl broke it, right, okay. Yeah, we'll blame Cheryl. Now, okay. I did tell Cheryl what that you sort of like unplug one thing and plug another thing in. Yeah. Which you do. Which I do. So she just did that. Yeah. And, so, and the other one stopped working. So whatever electric cable you get with your e-file, let this be a lesson. Don't plug something else in just because it fits because you will blow up your e-file. So no, look Sorry. after it. So um, you can see I'm starting right at this corner working all the way around the electric file is in the reverse mode so it's in reverse because i am moving like this if i was going this way like this i'd have to have it in forward but because i'm moving this way and i'm holding the handpiece in this way as well i need the rotation to push the skin away from the nail so this will push back the cuticles and it will also remove any non-living tissue that is on the nail plate. So it'll make it nice and clean. You get like a really nice clean prep. Because if you leave any non-living tissue on that natural nail, it sits there and it's a barrier between the nail and the product that you use on top of it. So whether that's acrylic gel or, you know, any any soft gel, hard gel, poly gel, whatever, it will create a barrier and you'll run into issues where you get lifted. So you want to make sure you just gently, very gently just etch that off. Not a lot of pressure at all. And then I'm going to use Proximal Fold Bit and Faye loves the name of this, doesn't she? Sounds so posh. Um, it's actually named after the part of the skin that we're actually going to be working on. The proximal fold. So, I'm using the reverse motion again, low speed, and this time I'm exfoliating dry skin from the cuticle area. And you can see that that pushes it up. Pushing back the cuticle as well. And it'll take off any dry, non living tissue. And we're going to do that across all the nails. There's nothing worse than doing a beautiful set of nails 
and the cuticles looking all dry and flaky. It's just like, no. So, I'm going to use the mandrel bit and the sanding bands now. This is the These are the fine sanding bands. They're so fine. So, this is the mandrel bit. It's got a lock system that works on tension. So, these prongs create the tension to hold the sanding band in place. So, you literally just pop that on. And that's nice and snug. Got a nice Swarovski AB crystal on the end, a bit gorgeous. So I'm going to go in the forward motion now because I'm going to be working from my right to my left. Slow speed between sort of five and seven RPM. And I'm literally just going to whip over to etch and kind of key the surface to create a nice key for the product to sit on and attach to. If you leave it sort of smooth and shiny, then you're gonna get lifting. But this is a fine sanding band. Don't be tempted to file over with an aggressive file. So I really hate seeing people use one file for everything. You know, there are lots of grits to hand files especially because they perform different tasks. If you went over the natural nail with a hundred grit file, I even see people use like 80 grit files. I'm like, that is so coarse. I would like do woodwork with that. And you know, I'm sure these wood sculptures people use like an 80 grit. Really? Uh, because have you ever felt it? No. There won't be no nail left up if you use that on a nail. So um, I don't even use like an 80 grit on on acrylic to be honest. There's just no need. So it's important to use the correct grits for the job. So this is a fine sanding band. It's a 240 grit. So you could use a 240 grit hand file if you wanted to. They don't use an electric file. So if you look at this, can you see how the top part's worn? So the top part, let me put it on here so I can rotate it, is more worn than the bottom. So if you're gonna move on to the other hand, you just literally flip that over and you've got a fresh sanding band at the top. Somebody was in the comment section the other day in a video and they were like, oh my God, I've wasted so many of those sanding bands. <laughs> oh, cause they've been, really yeah. That's what I mean. Some people think, oh, well, that's done now. That sanding band is. Just turn it over. Do the other hand so you know you've got a nice, fresh sanding band. Because can you imagine if I used that same part of that sanding band on this hand, it wouldn't etch it as good, would it? And then you'd probably be thinking, well, why is this hand lifted and this hand hasn't lifted? You know, the nails on this lifted the acrylics lifted or the gel but this hasn't you know it could be something as simple as that i'm going to dust off using my little new dusting brush <laughs> i've got two i've got two i've got one that looks like a wine glass like red wine and then I've got this one with these little beads in. Um, we'll put a link below of where they're from. Um, they're cute. They're very, very cute. I feel like the cats would come running though. Yeah. The cats, are, the cats will think that's a, some little yeah. play brush thing. They'll be like, ha, ah, toy time! Right, so I'm going to wipe over these now with um, the nail prep spray from Glitter Army. So I'm going to wipe and make sure I'm pushing back as well. Not only is it going to really clean those nail folds, it will keep that cuticle push back. So you can go rubber, rubber, rub, but make sure you kind of finish off with pushing that back. So I'm going to use some square tips. These are nice and long. Are we going to take any length off them? Maybe just a bit. Just a smidge. 
size them up. So it's important when you're sizing, sizing tips up. If you line up one edge, so I've lined up the edge on my right hand side. Now I look at the left, you can see that that overhangs. So we've got a size two, so let's go down to a size three. And make sure you line up both edges. This is what I don't want, you don't want to do this. If you put this tip on like this, because these tips have like a little, they kick up a little bit, yeah? So if you do, you sort of press and splay those little edges here and here to make it fit. Can you see what the nail tip does? It kicks up. You don't want that. Definitely not with a square nail either. So, I need to now make a decision. This is the easiest thing to do. Right, get the tip and press it into the actual body of the tip. Slide down, keeping the angle. Does it fit? Yeah? Because you want everything to be nice and straight. Now this is too small. So, we're gonna take our size two and show you the same. Slide down. Does it fit? It's a little bit wide. So if I line it up this side again and show you, can you see how it's a little bit wide? God, it's, it's I'm doing it wrong, it's like a millimeter. So if that happens, I'm gonna take a file. You are better going bigger than you are smaller. I know that you're probably thinking, yeah, but I want it to look nice and thin and, and petite and no. If you, have, if you put a tip on that's too small, it's going to lift. It's going to have fracture points and it will break. So if you pop the tip, you can pop it on a 180 grit file, a 150 grit file is fine as well. Pop it on like this. And then simply up and down like that. Give it a little bit of file. You're filing both edges at the same time. Have a little look. Check how much you've taken off. I think we can go a little bit more. Equal pressure. So I'm holding the tip and the, so the top and the bottom of the file. Sorry, the top and bottom of the tip. Equal pressure. Holding it flat. Let's give it dust. Now let's check it. Perfect. Okay. Clever little top tip. You're getting all the tips today. All tips the top on, tips. Tips on tips. tips on tips. tips. We're tipping on tips today. All the tips for the tips. Tippity top, tip top. Use the <laughs> wow bow. Wow bow. Wow wow. Wow wow bow. Wow bow. I remember applying a tip. They have no, this one has no wow. There is no wow. That is absolutely fine. I like to just put a little dollop there. And then from that dollop, pull out to each corner. So we have a nice, thin, little sort of amount there. Okay, and then I like to go on and then again. So I kind of transfer the glue onto the nail as well. And then press firmly, keeping everything nice and straight. Let me check. Oh, I've done a good job there. I think I've done this before. I've got some peri tweezers. So if you want to really anchor down the sides, you can use some peri tweezers just to come in. And both of those tools are will be linked below. They are from um, Nail Bar Lucy. And because this glue is so thin, if you need any more, you can literally just add that on and it'll just like seep into it. The thinner the glue that you're using, the quicker it will set. Oh, have you still got a knack it up, knack it up? So. I fixed it all now, but I had to put more holes in it. You had to put more holes in it to fix it? Yeah. That don't make sense. That don't make sense, So you want a little bit of length off, yeah? Yeah. How, how much? That's this much? Um, no. This much? What do we have like? Yeah. Really? Why? That's short, that is. Is <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. That is not short at all. Wait, wait. You're right. 
<laughs> you're just visualizing. So let's just go here for now. And I want you to look at what you think about this. What I'll do is I'll just file the end a little bit. Yeah, but that makes me smooth. <laughs> yeah, but I've only chewed a little bit off. I was right down here before. That was not a big chunk. Oh, right. There was nowhere near as much as you. I think we've got another fear on our hands here. No, I'm not that bad. <laughs> Luke, that is all we that that little bit. Little bit. Before, well, when I said about it before, I was down here. I was there, and you said yeah. I can't see. Put them like Cuticle, line up your cuticles, yeah. They're not massively different, are they? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you sure? I can take more off if you want. No, more? <laughs> not more. The only thing I am going to do is, this one I'm going to pinch a little bit more. And that's because, you know, we took a little bit of um, the sides off. So we lost a little bit of C-curve from filing the sides. So I'm just kind of rolling this and giving it a bit of a pinch to make it a little bit slummy. So then I'm going to take the mandrel bit and fine sanding bands. You can do this with a 240 grit, 180 grit if you're definitely not going to touch the natural nail. I'm going to use sanding band because it's just like an absolute doddle to do. Um, you can use fine sanding band. You can use the medium as long as you're not going to touch the natural nail. So I'm going to show you and just literally going to go over that contact area. See? Just blend that little line between the tip and the natural nail. Just blend, 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 blend. When you do sidewalls, make sure you support the nail. Lovely jubbly, lovely, lovely jubbly. If you're doing gel, make sure that you abrase the entire tip. We're not, we're doing acrylic, so we don't need, don't need to do that at all. So we're going to move on to the other four little piggies went to market. So I'm gonna wipe over with the nail prep spray from, from Glitter Armor. For this design, I have got some gorgeous colours, Doc. Oh, they're beautiful. So this green is called Vibe. It's a vibe, clearly it's a vibe. Um, Queenie. Then we've got Tequila Sunrise. And then we've got Just Legal. Ooh, don't have a lot of that name. Um, Summer Punch. Gorgeous colours, all by Glitter Armour. Then, I'm yet to decide which of these cover pinks I'm going to use. So we've got Dainty Dolly. One of these is Dainty Dolly as well. So we can put that aside. Okay, maybe I'll put that one back. So we've got three colours. We've got Dainty Dolly. We've got Ballet Shoe, Boom Baby, this one. I absolutely love the look of it already. It's called Pink Sparkle. And then we've got Nude Pink. So I'm literally just gonna do a bead of each to make sure I like the color. Because that we're gonna do like an ombre over the nude. And I'm looking for maybe even two color pink colors. One that's really intense with pigment and one that's a little bit, got a little bit more transparency to help with the blend. So that's what I'm gonna look at here. Gonna get my dampened dish. Got the monomer, which is the premium adhesive monomer, which doesn't require a primer. So, dainty dolly. Nice, quite pigmented, a uh, ballet shoe. So 
So it's more peachy toned. Boom, baby. Mm, it has like a sh slight shimmer, but it's very intense with colours. A bit too much, that one, definitely. Then we've got nude pink. Can you see on the brush that colour separation between pigment and then like it goes lighter at the bottom? Well, it's not noticeable when you lay it down. When you put it down, it isn't. It isn't at all, which is brilliant. And then we've got pink sparkle. <laughs> okay, and the winner is <laughs> pink sparkle. Do you think, well? Mm -hmm. So you can see the nice sparkle in this. Can you just about see that one's got like a bit of a shimmer as well, but it's, it's a bit too intense with colour. I like this nice and pink, this is nice and peach. These two are a little bit too much intense for me, but this, this, oh my God. Love it. So that's the one we're gonna use alongside the um, neon colours as well. Colour orgy. Yes, love that. What made you do that? Why? why? So I'll tell you for why. Green to yellow, green and yellow assembly can be mixed together. So they're close in colour. Yellow and orange, close in colour because you mix red with yellow to create an orange. Yeah. These two are close in colour, more close than these two. Yeah. yeah? So the pink and the and the orange are close in colour and then naturally I would go to purple because it's slightly darker and I know that pink and purple look amazing together. Colour theory because... How would you explain a fruit pastel ice lolly then? Because that's purple. That's all kinds of shades are messed up. Yeah, or, no, purple, green, orange. Come on, you've eaten enough. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Um, maybe that's because they want them to look at really individual. Mm -hmm. Whereas we want this to like flow. We want it to flow. Whereas if they were in that other order that we did, they look very blocky, individual, and I want everything to kind of flow. So we're going to use this green. It has a little bit of sparkle in. Look at that. Oh my God. That is gorgeous. I've not used this colour before, so going on the thumb, I'm going to start at this free edge first of all and work my way back. This is nice. Do you all know that green is my favourite colour? So, pink sparkle. And I want you to notice with this green, I've got a thicker amount here. And then we slope down and go nice and thin as we come towards the natural nail. So when we do this now, this color, I'm gonna start here. I'm not gonna worry about that cuticle area yet. I'm going to pat, 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 just to flatten that back a little bit. And then I'm going to tuck up those sides. 
and then I'm going to softly bring down that pink sparkle. That is nice. Next bead, this is when we're going to start to think about the cuticle area. Still tipping the finger down so it draws away from the cuticle area. And then you can lift the finger up now and we can drag down, softening that blend as the product comes over. And we also build a bit of an apex. You can see we've got a nice blend. We've got an apex building and then we're going to cap it in clear. But I'm going to do that right at the end. I'm going to get all the colour on first. So when we've got Summer Punch. very pigmented it doesn't really move a lot but it's still really easy to move around it, you, your brush doesn't want to pick up a lot I find that with this one um, I would definitely put this on thin because to me it's saying it doesn't move a lot it's got a lot of pigment in it that's why it's not moving as much as like a normal sort of polymer would so when you put your brush into the into the actual pot it doesn't want to pick up a lot and i just think that's down to the makeup of it Now we're going to do the same with the sparkly pink. So again, don't worry about the cuticle area at this point. Just start to slide it down. Reminds me of lemon sherbet. Mm. I love lemon sherbet. Don't you like lemon sherbet? Mm. No, Lily. Mm. Send back. Lemon sherbet's are like the best old fashioned sweet ever. Well, they're not as good as rhubarb because. Oh, my oh, gosh. I love rhubarb. Oh, well, all oh, right then. Traditional one that's been yeah. made in front of you as well. Have you ever seen it being made? No. So we go to um, Beamish uh, Museum. Yeah. Uh, which is close to where I live. And it's basically, it's an old. There's a mining village there. There's a Victorian town. They're doing a 50s town as well at the moment. Um, but the Victorian town, they've got a traditional sweet shop and they make the sweets in for like show. Out wow. There. And so they obviously mix all the sugars and then the colors and then they, you know how they pull the- Stretch it. Stretch it. So it yeah, goes, yeah. So it goes cloudy. Um, and when you get it, it's still warm. No, oh, I bet that's amazing. Amazing. So tasty. I like the ice cream van one. Ice cream van? The cylinders with the different colours inside. No, I haven't. I've had. You mean sherbets? No. You find them. I'm going to come back to this one and pop the Samantha pinching tool on from navy tools just pinching the natural nail not so much the actual nail itself whenever you do colorful stuff it just makes me want sweet <laughs> they are a bit sweetie aren't they these yeah. right then we're going to use tequila sunrise let's see how this one picks up it looks super pigmented again so we've got a little bit of marbling 
that's the thing with oh god this setting quick this is setting quick yeah so it's a little bit marbly just gotta work it a little bit get your brush run it over work the product a bit but it does start to set really quickly so just watch that I'm going to pick up a smaller bead and see how this works when it's a smaller bead. Yeah, you still get a lot of sort of marbling because it would be predominantly clear acrylic and the neon pigment. Oh, it works in nice. It does, you know, give it a stroke and it, it does blend. Now let's do the bead here. I'm just going to keep touching it because I know it needs to blend a little bit. Plus, I want to feather this. I want to keep it moving. So I adjusted my application because I knew that it was going to set quick. I didn't drain any liquid off my brush. I didn't clean my brush. I just kept moving with it and working with it like that. And that's what you have to do sometimes with certain brands, you know, you just have to kind of figure out what's best, what works best. Are you using the same cover pink for all of them? Oh, I am using the same cover pink for all of them because it is beautiful. I no, I'm going to, because I was going to try in two different colours originally. I wanted one really pigmented and one not so pigmented. And it's actually worked out that this is doing kind of both the jobs. It's masking the blend nicely. It's, and it's, um, you know, it's giving that sort of soft. Sorry, there's banging in the background, guys. Do apologize. Yeah, there's some work going on upstairs. On the, on the patio. Yes, on the patio, yeah. darling. Yeah, so it covers nicely at the cuticle area. It's got enough pigment for that. And it also blends nice over the top of the, the neon colours, so I didn't need to use two different colours. Because that was my plan originally. Plus, this colour is like a standalone colour. You could even have a full set of this. <laughs> this sparkle. Mm, it's beautiful. Just legal. Not sure about that name. Let's have a look what this one's like. Yeah, there's a bit of problem, there's a bit of like um, marbling with this as well. So keep working. Touch, 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 touch. And it sets up so quick. Yeah, this is so much better worked with in little beads. Little beads, and you're going to have to use it quite wet. So literally use it for pigment. It's not going to give you strength, but it's going to give you a lot of colour. Keep it nice and thin as you come to the end of that tip. So as you come towards the natural nail here, make sure you go nice and thin. Got to really clean that brush because there's still pigment. Look at this. Woo, there's still loads of pigment. Okay. Queenie, nice purple. I'm just gonna give this a stir because I could see a little bit of white. So 
but with all clear powder on the top. Let's give that a bit of a stir. Oh my God, look what I've done. Quick, get my brush and pick up that and get rid. That's what you need to do if you do that. So let's have a look at this purple. Yeah, you need to go a little with this as well. Little beads. So I want to make everybody aware of a situation that um, happened. Lily, who's our model today, who's like my sister, she has her own Instagram account. I'm not just telling you this so we can get her numbers up, but yeah, let's get her numbers up. Um, so Lily, so what I'm saying is you've got like, you know, good following. It's not massive, you know, you're not like this big, massive influencer. You're new to the game and all this. Somebody took Lily's pictures from her Facebook, uh, sorry, from her Instagram account and used them to make a fake Instagram account to try to lure, lure? Law, 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 or, or from Stoke, Louis, to law girls in Lily. But, so tell them about, you tell them about the TikTok thing first. My friend sent me this TikTok that's saying that they're using your photos to create a fake account to catch people's boyfriends out. And really? So, yeah. Ah, mm. wow. So this, I messaged this account, found it on Instagram. And I asked politely, like, please, could you remove the videos? Because I didn't give consent. Like, they, they then proceeded to block me on every platform that I could access them on. Like, they blocked my mates and everything, so none of us could, could see it. expose it. It sounds them. like somebody else, doesn't it? Mm, it <laughs> does sound like somebody else. My little sister followed this account and got added into this Snapchat group chat with all of them in. So all her followers from this Instagram account were added into a Snapchat group convo. This is yeah. so confusing. So it's gone from TikTok, it's gone from your Instagram to a TikTok to Instagram, Instagram to and now it's Snapchat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they've got lost by now. <laughs> and so it's, to, so it's people trying to, using your photo as an attractive young girl to try and lure boys to see if they're fearful or not. Is that yes. what you're saying? Yeah. That's what she said. Right, so okay. Or this person said that the account was about. But then it took a bit of a twist in turn. Mm -hmm. So what happened then was, Lily, uh, like before, just before you got onto the chat, wasn't it? Before Lily got invited onto this chat via our sister, this person had been saying, Oh, you need to meet us this weekend. I've got a free house. There'll be alcohol. Um, don't worry if you're pregnant. You'll still be able to have fun. Um, and people are like, oh, well, I'm working though. And this person saying, book a day off. Don't worry, book a day off. And then if you need a lift, I'll come and pick you up. Um, so, and there's over a, over 200 people in this in this chat. And this person has been really persuasive trying to get everybody meet at this house. I mean, it must be a big house if you can fit that many girls in. Um, so it all sounds a bit suspicious. First of all, you make a TikTok about come and join my Instagram and we will um, we will catch these boys out together, you know, if you you know don't trust your boyfriend. And you use a fake profile already. No. Yeah. And then, you know, get them from go from the TikTok with this you know, luring them in to the Instagram to then go to from there to um, Snapchat, which is very difficult for the police to even to monitor. Um, and I know this because I spoke to um, a sergeant who works for Staffordshire Police. And he said it's very difficult because you need an address and a phone number. They can track certain things from Instagram, Facebook, but Snapchat is really difficult. Now, paedophiles and um, sex trafficking people know this. They know how difficult it is for them to get caught. 
they often use females to get females uh, or they you know hide behind a profile of a gorgeous young girl so once I put I, I joined this group into Lily and I put in there you know girls like are you are you silly you know you're gonna meet somebody that you don't even know this person could be a paedophile or sex trafficking and you're going to willingly go into this house of a stranger to be piled with alcohol piled plied Why? plied with alcohol you know it's does no one like think that this is a bit suspicious? It can't be real. Mm. It cannot be real. So I said this, and and I said, you know, you're all going to be. It didn't, it's it's dangerous. You know, not only is are they using a seventeen year old girl's pictures, which is, you know, bang out of order. Um, they are now trying to get you to meet. You know, at a location. Even if you're pregnant. Even if you're and pregnant. I, and that, that bit's like, well, that's just creepy. It, it, that's what I mean. There's Come a... on, you're pregnant, let's give you alcohol. Because there was yeah. a range of ages. It's like 15 to like 20 year old. Mm-hmm. It's very, very weird. Very suspicious. So, <clears throat> please, please do not fall for these tricks. I'm sure that this person will do this again maybe a little bit different, they'll learn from this and they will do this again and they will try to get girls to join groups to maybe catch people's boyfriends out or to, for something else, for, no, for another reason. And just be really careful when you're online and know that people have been in lockdown and things like that and want to be online and that's fair enough, but you need to be safe. You need to be safe. If you, you need to talk about what you talk about online. So the kind of girls that would have gone to this house would have been girls that were vulnerable. So they may not have had somebody around them to say, hold on a minute, you're going to see some, some stranger in a house with other girls to get drunk. That's weird. You know, they might not have had that person to give them that advice. Um, it's a really good, good thing that they used Lily's photo because now you can do this. Exactly. Because you've got the platform to be able to talk to people about that. And it's, it's, I just think it's crazy, you know. Um, I want to put it out there. I really do want to put it out there that this is wrong and you need to be careful. You know, all these girls could have gone to this house and God knows what would have happened to them. Um, it's lucky that it was my sister that it happened to. So I could, you know, try my best to get these girls to understand that this isn't right. And as soon as we... As soon as I put this out there on the group, everybody realised, oh my God, yeah, the penny dropped. And this person left the chat. Guilty. Got rid of the Instagram. Got rid of the TikTok. Mm -hmm. Swiped it on. If you are legitimately trying to do what you said you were doing, you wouldn't do that. And let me tell you this, girls, if you've got suspicions about your boyfriend cheating, there's only one place for him, and that is right in the bin, the trash. He doesn't need to be in your life if you are already doubting him. So don't reach out to somebody on social media to try to catch him out. Get rid of him. Move on. Find somebody good. So that's a lesson from... <laughs> Or smickings here. <laughs> and back to this. And back to this. Now we're going to um, cap these in clear. So I've got crystal clear. Look at the pretty pattern I've made here. Look at it. Look at it. It looks like tie dye. It like looks like my image. <laughs> so we're going to cap now. I pinched them as I went, which was fine. You could cap at the same time, but I prefer just cap, 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 cap. Right, so nice big bead. So we're going quite low. And these dishes are nice because you can go quite low so we can get a nice big bead. And I'm going to work from that apex area. Now this is the first time I've used Glitterama's products. Um, so I'm giving you like open and frank, honest opinions. 
So I've got a nice big bead. It does take a bit of pressure to get it moving, but it is moving. I don't know how clear it is. We will see when we add the top coat, which I'm pretty excited about. I'm just gonna get a smaller bead now. See how upright my brush is because I'm getting a small bead. So I just wanna make sure I've capped that very edge. So, this, is this chat still open? Are people talking on this chat yeah. still, Lily? Yeah. Yeah. And is everybody, what is everybody saying on there? Like? They're just realising that how silly they were that they didn't notice it sooner. And how, how dangerous it could yeah. have been. But now they're just using it as just like a chat. Like talk to everyone. So they've kind of made friends out of it as yeah. well. That's the only positive thing that's come out of it. Mm -hmm. Friends and followers. Yeah. Right, we're going to file now. So I'm going to show you my normal filing routine. I will need my files, so I've got the metal, shift your hand, <laughs> I've got the metal centreboard file, so this part's reusable, these, these are disposable, these ones are, okay, so I like mine 180 and 150, so I'm going to set these up, so take off this, the backing to reveal the sticky Sort of surface. Uh -huh. So line it up, press it down, turn it over, and we're going to do the same. Line it up, watch my head while I just line it up, and then put that down. Nice. I'm going to take um, a, you can take whatever file you want, really. Maybe it needs, well, it does need to be higher than a, a 240, so a 150, a 180, or a 100 grit, just to take off those sharp edges. You need to do this with every single file that you have. First thing I'm gonna do is have a little look at the sides. Now, if I wanna really etch into there and get nice and tight, I'm gonna use the metal file. So this is a 120 grit file, but it's reusable. It's sanitizable, and because it's so thin, it can really get into those sides without, you know, disturbing this skin too much. Just gonna get that free edge straight. Just gonna do this on all of them. Then I'm gonna go to my electric file. So I'm using the purple bit from our complete pro collection of e-file bits. So it's got the purple swastika bit on the end. Purple lilac, it's more lilac. And I'm just whipping over to reduce any thickness where needed. And just to smooth over, bring everything together. And once I've done this, I will finish with a ham file just to really perfect it. That's the worst part. Yeah. Do you prefer the electric file? Yeah. So I'm going to take my file. So I've got my 180 on one side and I've got my 150 on the other side. So if I want to really go for it and I can see that there's a little bit of bulk, I can use that 150 side. But then if I just want to kind of smooth and perfect, then I will use this 180 side because it will smooth a little bit more. It'll still reduce thickness, but it'll be less aggressive than a 150 grit file. So 
we're gonna buff them, make them nice and smooth. So by buffing them, you're gonna smooth them and it also helps to get rid of all those sort of etched lines from the nail file. I've always wondered why the buffer is chunkier. So, right, the buffer's chunkier because it actually wraps around the nail. So as we file this, the cushion wraps around the nail. And plus, the material is a little bit softer and thinner, and it, the material even needs support as well under it as well. But it's mainly so you can like wrap it around and it just nice. Right. Bendy. bendy, bendy, yeah. It sort of squishes into it. Yeah. Imagine if it was really hard, then it would create like flat spots. Okay. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Give them a good dusting. And I'm going to get you to wash your hands. Just so um, you can get rid of all the dust. And the, the and the donut hands. <laughs> she's got a sticky donut hand. So. Good donut, though. Amazing donuts. Mm. So I'm going to top coat these with a tack free top coat. I love the sparkle. I'm using Nail Camis top coat. That is a no wipe top coat, so it's got no tacky layer. It's important to do this first so we have a very, very smooth surface to the next part of the design. And then I'm going to use the um, painting gel from Nail Kami. You can literally just pump that out onto a palette if you want to. Um, I also have. I also have this palette as well that I do some mixing in. And I'm going to use a striping brush. This is the Lacente striping brush. There are different ones. It doesn't tell you which one this is, unfortunately. And we're going to start at the top, make contact, and drag down. To the very tip. I like to go over a few times just dispersing the paint nice and evenly. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get corresponding colours in the Nail Kami um, Poseidon glass range. So I'm going to get a yellow, an orange, oh look at my nail sticking out my glove. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a pink and a purple. Oh, so the white was just as a base. Yes. Ah, I white. So we're going to get a little bit of that yellow. And we're going to get another striping brush. It's slightly shorter and I label press on this to make it a bit thicker. Sorry about the banging upstairs. Um, 
and then we're going to go directly over the top and either side so you want the gel to sit either side of the white as well so it kind of gives it a glow so we have did I say white? Right, so you've got a white line, the glass paint, the glass gel polish needs to be wider than the white line. So you get like a glow, like a neon light. Um, so I get a glow on the that in so we've got a purple for the purple one which is called Hydra then we've got sea nymph for the orange sort of corally one and then we've got water sprite for the pink Oh, do you know what they look like? Lightsabers. <laughs> so I'm going to pour a few crystals at the base of each nail because I kind of don't want to take away from the blend or that like neon line. Neon lights. Oh, the lights. <laughs> and I'm going to be using the um, Crystal gem glue because I love it. I'm going to use my Pammy Pickle Upper so I can use the metal part of the Pammy Pickle Upper to place down the gel. We can use the wax part to pick our gem up. On one. We're going to do everything here the same with those stones. So I'm going to top coat and I'm going to literally come right at the side of the stones and that will also help the stones stay on nice and sturdy and obviously it's going to seal in this neon line that we have coming down the centre of the nail. Thank you. 
I absolutely love these. These are like, you know, festival vibe. Yes, with the colours, Ibiza vibe. Total summer. Have you not been to Ibiza? No. Oh, really? I've been to Vegas like seven yeah, times. Yeah, but Ibiza is just like, like that party. Yeah. Vegas hasn't got a patch on it. Get lost! Has no, 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 no. No, no. Izzy said Vegas is better than Ibiza. Believe she's me, been, Ibiza is she's got all time. a billion times better than, than Vegas. Oh. Depends what you go for, though. Yeah, I just think Ibiza is just full of drugs and that's not what I like, so. I like a bit of gin, but no drugs. Well, it's not just full of drugs. But it is. But so is Vegas. <laughs> I never saw any. Mind you, I could probably go to Ibiza and never see any, I suppose. Probably good, yeah. So, there we are. I've put a little bit of cuticle oil on. Obviously, my favourite um, indigo nails, cuticle oil. And drama queen. <laughs> but yeah, what do you think? They are absolutely bloody gorgeous. So, there you are, guys. Don't forget, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We've got videos also on Facebook. Instagram, if you follow Kirsty Mickey and me, obviously. Um, like my amazing videos on there as well. Yeah, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, Adam's amazing videos of him trying to talk to camera and going down. Yeah! Because <laughs> he can't do it. Um, so yeah, but we're, we're like all over social media, so don't forget to follow us everywhere. And if you want to follow me, then you'll see like me stories on Instagram, things like that, of different stuff. But yeah, loads of nail videos on Facebook as well, which is Kirsten Mickey Nail Artist. Everything I've used today will be listed below. So have a little look, have a little go. See you later. Love you, bye. Small things, it's the small things that give me so much satisfaction. <laughs>